Good morning, children. Today, this is the second video lesson I am going to start. And the same chapter will continue, cell, the unit of life. And this one is part 2. Children, in the first video, we started with the chapter cell. We discussed about that what is a cell. We also discussed about the invention that is about uh, Anthony Van Uyen Hoek, also about uh, Robert Hooke, the discoverer of cell, about the microscopes that is the compound microscope and uh, this one the electron microscope. We discussed the cell theory, the uh, means who the three scientists uh, after whom uh, the cell theory is named that is who formulated the cell theory and how small and how numerous the cells are. And one more very important thing we discussed that the smallness of the cells the greater is the efficiency isn't it we discussed about this now children today we are going to start with the actual chapter that is the structure of the cell how the cell looks like so let us go into that uh, detail so in this slide you can see children the structure of a cell i have also given a diagram alongside that you can compare uh, the uh, structures which are drawn there so a generalized cell consists of three essential parts. Now, what does this generalized cell uh, uh, means? There are various kinds of cells, you know, and all types of cells have uh, certain special differences, okay, certain special features. But whatever differences are there in different types of cells, but a cell shows some basic structural plan, some basic structures are present in all the cells, okay? So, that is a generalized cell and the generalized cell uh, has three essential parts. What are they? The cell membrane, the nucleus and the third, the cytoplasm. So, all these uh, structures will see and within these structures, some more structures are there. We'll also look into those details. Now, the first one is cell membrane you can see in the diagram alongside that uh, the cell membrane is the outer boundary of the cell the orange colored you can see this outer boundary of the uh, cell is known as the cell membrane it is the outer membrane or which is also known as the plasma membrane the next is the nucleus the light blue colored uh, structure you can see not the dark blue colored dark blue colored is nucleolus the light blue colored structure which is uh, cut to show the nucleolus inside that uh, light blue colored structure is that big inside in the just in uh, the center of the cell is the nucleus and the cytoplasm is the light green colored or sa light sap green colored uh, uh, part you can see in that uh, diagram the cytoplasm is the liquid part or the jelly-like part of the cell in which all the cell organelles are present. Now, just below the uh, three essential parts of the cell, you can see I have written cell organelles. Now, what does this cell organelles mean? Cell organelles means the small structures which are, are present inside the cell. The cell consists of certain living structures inside it which are known as the cell organelles. These organelles have definite shape, structure and function. Now children, you know that in a body of a human being, you uh, uh, are aware that we have many organs like the lungs, the heart, uh, the intestine, the stomach, so many organs are there, isn't it? Now, those are, they have a particular shape, they have a particular function to perform on the structure also. Now, they are the organs of the body. Similarly, a cell also has certain organelles or organs which perform certain functions of the cell. Now, you must be thinking then why not they are called cell organs and why cell organelles? Now, you know that cell itself is a microscopic structure. We cannot see without a microscope or something. And imagine that the organelles are much, much smaller than that. So, that's why the term organ is not given. It is given cell organelles. Cell organelles means little organs, okay? That is little organs of the cell. That's why the name cell organelles. Now, let us come to the parts of the cell. You can see the parts, the cell wall, which is present only in plant cell. Be very careful. It is a non-living part, okay? We'll discuss all these in detail. First, let us go very roughly. Cell wall is present only in plant cell and it is a non-living part. Cell membrane, endoplasmic reticulum, mitochondria. Say, see the cell membrane I already talked about. That is the boundary of the cell. Cell endoplasmic reticulum, this uh, orangish color just attached with the nucleus. You can see an orangish colored structure, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We will go again into the detail of that. 
mitochondria's present see this yellow colored structure with a blue uh, interior uh, this uh, uh, spherical sac like structure is there you can see the golgi apparatus the all these are living structures the ribosomes the lysosomes all these are present the centrosomes very important present only in animal cell okay not in plant cell plastids as you know are present only in the plant cell and not in animal cell they all are living some non living structures like granules granules means starch uh, storage of starch some starch droplets some starch granules some glycogen granules depending upon in which cell it is present vacuoles are there fat droplets are there nuclear membrane let us come to the nucleus the blue part the nuclear membrane that is a nucleus that blue part is surrounded by, uh, by a membrane again which is a living structure that membrane of the nucleus is known as the nuclear membrane or sometimes it is also called the nucleo nuclear envelope uh we have the nucleoli the dark blue colored uh, mm, uh not dark blue uh, means much uh, darker uh, uh means uh, colored uh, darker stain of blue is there uh, inside the nucleus which is known as a nucleolus or nu nucleoli that is singular and plural and you can see chromatin like some thread like structures are there the chromatin and nucleoplasm that is a light blue colored inside uh, the jelly like part which is present inside the nucleus is known as nucleoplasm so these are some of the structures now we'll deal each one of them in detail let us go into the next slide okay children first we'll deal with the cell membrane okay now what do you mean by a cell membrane and the cell wall Each cell is surrounded by a cell membrane which is made up of lipoprotein. Lipoprotein means lipids that is fats and protein. So the cell membrane is made up of lipids and proteins together. Okay. Now it has fine pores. It has fine pores through which the substance may enter and leave the cell. It has very fine pores through which the substances uh, enters and leaves the cell. it is selectively permeable this is the meaning of uh, leaving and entering the cell this is the single word has been given which is selectively permeable what do you mean by a selectively permeable membrane cell membrane is selectively permeable selectively means it selects what to go in and what to come out permeable means permits so it selectively permits what to move in and what to move out now plant cell plant cells have uh, a cell wall that is outside the cell membrane they also have a cell membrane but the cell membrane is the inner layer or inner boundary and outer to the cell membrane is another layer which is known as the cell wall this cell wall is made up of cellulose and it is non living cell wall is freely permeable very very important cell wall is not as strict as cell membrane cell wall allows most of the things to move in and move out very freely no restrictions at all and it the main part of cell wall is that it gives shape and rigidity to the cell it uh, maintains the shape and uh, increase the tensile strength of the uh, plant or the plant cell rather okay now uh, coming to the next part that is cytoplasm cytoplasm it is the semi transparent substance semi liquid transparent substance present within the cell membrane now inside the cell membrane is a liquid jelly uh, jelly like liquid part which is known as the cell membrane now many chemical reactions take place in this cytoplasm okay cytoplasm is the jelly like thing or substance in which many chemical reactions all the metabolic reactions takes place there and it is in a state of continuous movement okay always it uh, moves uh, streaming movement is there and that streaming movement of cytoplasm is known as cyclosis this name is not given in your book i have written that cyclosis is the streaming movement of the cytoplasm that it moves uh, all around inside the cell okay now the following cell organelles are embedded in the cytoplasm what are the different cell organelles that is the organs of the cell the little organs of the cell which are present in this inside the cytoplasm the first one you can see i have given a diagram also is a endoplasmic reticulum it's it is a, a abbreviation also sometimes i'll uh, give er okay for endoplasmic reticulum please do not write in the examination this is just uh, uh, because uh, there is shortage of space that's why its structure is very fine and it can be seen only through a electron microscope without com uh, means with compound microscope it cannot be seen it is an irregular network of double membranes can you see the double membranes see that in the structure it is double membranes are present in the endoplasmic reticulum its outer end is connected to the cell membrane the outer side will be connected with the cell membrane generally it's connected and the inner end is connected to the nuclear membrane and the connection with the nuclear membrane is visible in the 
diagram alongside if ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum if ribosomes are attached you can see in the diagram some small dot like uh, things are attached in this uh, 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 diagram with the endoplasmic reticulum the round one is the nucleus that we are not considering this uh, uh, other side of the nucleus we can see these tubular sacs these are the endoplasmic reticulum and when ribosomes are studded that is the endoplasmic reticulum is studded with ribosomes it is called rough endoplasmic reticulum and if it, it is uh, there are no uh, endo, uh, sorry there are no ribosomes attached with the endoplasmic reticulum then it is known as the smooth endoplasmic see alongside smooth endoplasmic reticulum is also shown in the diagram see it is smooth without any ribosomes forms the supportive framework of the cell gives a uh, support to the uh, this uh, of the uh, to the cell and also distributes materials from one part of the cell to another part okay so one part of the it takes the materials from one part to another part these are the functions of the endoplasmic reticulum let us go into the next slide where we'll deal with the ribosomes okay ribosomes these are numerous small granules either scattered freely in the cytoplasm or attached to the membranes of the endoplasmic reticulum we just now saw the ribosomes uh, which were attached to the endoplasmic reticulum but always they will be attached with the uh, endoplasmic reticulum that is not the case okay sometimes it also remains suspended freely in the cytoplasm they are considered as the factories of protein synthesis because it is the place where proteins are formed inside our cells <coughs> and ultimately in our body now <clears throat> the third one is mitochondria mitochondria they are spherical rod like bodies please match the diagram which is given alongside uh, which are considered as the cells energy producers okay the they are rod like bodies they are the energy producers of the cell the mitochondria that's why they are called the powerhouse of the cell also okay now minute double walled bags they are minute double wall bags you can see the uh, outer the see the inner membrane and outer membrane it's written the outer membrane is one layer and the inner membrane is another la layer that's why minute very small double wall bags with inner walls produced into finger like processes projecting in inwards see the finger like projections the inner membrane has been thrown into folds finger like projections these are these finger like projections are called the cristae okay it is a site of cell respiration where energy is produced respiration process means energy will be produced okay and thus release energy which is stored in the form of atp always the energy released by the uh, mitochondria is stored in the form of atp the full form of atp is adenosine triphosphate that is three phosphates are attached to adenosine this energy is used in various metabolic functions of the cell for performing various activities of the cell this energy is used hence it is called the powerhouse of the cell we come to the next cell orga organelle the golgi apparatus it originates from the endoplasmic reticulum okay small vesicles of different shapes located near the nucleus consist of small groups of hollow tubular structures with membranous walls and also have some minute vesicles and vacuoles you can see some tube tube like structures are there long ones and some minute vesicles means round round bag like structures are also there okay so minute vesicles vacuoles and some tubular structures are also present in the golgi apparatus it is concerned with secretion of the cell including enzymes and hormones enzymes and hormones are produced by this golgi apparatus okay let us now go into the next slide lysosomes they are small vesicles vesicles means again small sacs of different shapes containing digestive enzymes so it contains what the digestive enzymes okay their enzymes are uh, their enzymes destroy and digest the foreign substances around them now the enzymes which are released by the lysosomes they are released uh, means inside uh, these enzymes which are produced inside the lysosomes they digest and destroy the foreign substances around them for example some uh, germs or something enter into the cell uh, they, they are digested by these enzymes are destroyed by these enzymes break down stored food during starvation of the cell for example there are some uh, stored food inside the cell also now when for example the from the outside the cell is not getting any food that stored food is broken down into simpler forms so that the cell can utilize those 
food molecules. The damaged cells are destroyed by their own lysosomes and hence are called the suicide bags. These uh, lysosomes, actually they, uh, we saw that uh, they secrete different enzymes. Now, when sometimes what happens, the cell itself has become uh, very means uh, worn out means it is it is very old it is not able to perform some of the functions or some of the cell organelles also might have become very old now what these lysosomes, uh, lysosomes do they release they burst and they release their enzymes into the cell thus damaging uh, means uh, uh, means destroy the worn out or old um, uh, cell organelles or the cell itself that's why it is known as a suicide bag sometimes when why suicide because it sometimes kills its own cell in which it is present that's that's why the name suicide bags okay next comes the centrosome and the centriole now centrosome is found only in animal cell children they are not found in uh, this uh, pl uh, plant cell it is a clear area of cytoplasm close to the nucleus the very close to the nucleus the centrosome is present along with the two centrioles the, you can see the diagram alongside can you see that uh, there is a round structure the, then that round structure that is the, called the centrosphere actually in this uh, centrosphere there is no cytoplasm and it has two uh, these uh, centrioles inside can you see two tube like structures which are arranged right angles to each other see perpendicular to each other they are arranged okay uh, the, uh, it is a clear area of cytoplasm close to the nucleus spindle fibers develop from the centrosome during cell division only during cell division spindle fibers can you see the next diagram which i have given children can you see those uh, yellow like uh, yellow fibers which are going from one centriole to the other centriole they are called the spindle fibers during cell division these spindle fibers are formed by the centrioles or, or the centrosome centrosome contain two centrioles which are short bundles of microfilaments see in each of the uh, centrioles see one centriole and the second one is perpendicular to the other in each of the centriole there are uh, uh, straight uh, lined line uh, like structures can you see these are called the microfilaments there are nine uh, microfilaments attached to each centriole okay and they are right angles to each other okay now plastids next next one found only in animal uh, sorry found only in plant cell not in animal cell may be oval spherical or disc shaped Depending upon the color they impart, which pigment they have and which color they show, they are of three types. What are they? First one is leucoplast. They are colorless with no pigments at all. No pigments are there. Stores starch. Okay. The cells of the potato are examples of this type of plastids. So, first type of plastids is leucoplast. The second one are the chromoplast. Chromoplast means they will have different colors. Different colors like red, orange, uh, red, orange, all these colors are present there. Now, pigments are xanthophyll. Which pigments are present in plastids? The xanthophyll and carotene pigments are present. Okay, example. Petals of flowers and in fruits, they are present in the petals of flowers. Okay, here variously colored, one will be yellow. Okay, I have written two times red there. Where one will be yellow, orange and red. These three colors are generally imparted by these chromoplasts. And the pigments which are present are xanthophyll and carotene. So, you must remember that what are the pigments present. And they are present in the petals of the flower and the fruits. You know that flowers are differently colored, variously colored as well as the fruits. Now, let us go into the next slide. Some colors like violet, purple, uh, blue are not related to the plastids. Is instead these pigments and that is anthocyanin remain dissolved in the cell sap of the vacuoles. Now, what happens, children? You have seen beetroot, isn't it? They have a different color like violet uh, or purple, purplish color, dark one. Okay, isn't it? Now they are not uh, these. This uh, pigment that is anthocyanin is in is, is not present in. The chromoplast they are present in the vacuole cell sap of vacuoles it is a liquid which is present inside the vacuoles they have this anthocyanin and not the chromoplast okay so anthocyanin is present in the vacuoles that is the cell sap of the vacuole that is a cell organelle and the example is beetroot this anthocyanin pigment is present in beetroot the third type of uh, plastids is the chloroplast we are all aware that there is the green chlorophyll pigment which this chloroplast contain green colored plastids which have pigment called chlorophyll these plastids are present in the leaves they trap solar energy and prepare food for the plant by the process of 
photosynthesis. Very important point, this one is chloroplast contain DNA of its own and can divide and multiply and form many chloroplasts inside the cell according to the need of the cell. Okay. Now, so the three types of plastids, the leucoplast, the chromoplast and the chloroplast. The eighth um, cell organelle, what is there? The non-living substances or the cell inclusions. What does cell inclusions mean? The substances or the parts which are included in the cell. They are non-living, that's why known, known as cell inclusions. They are included in the cell. What are they? Granules contain food material like starch, glycogen and fats. Okay, contain food materials like starch, glycogen, fats. These are depending upon which type of cell we are talking about. For example, starch you know is the uh, storage uh, food in case of plants and glycogen is the storage food. Glycogen and fats are the storage uh, uh, forms in case of animals. So, animal cells will majorly have those starch is also present in uh, animal cell few but Glycogen and fats are more present in animal cell and starch is mostly present in the plant cell. Okay, Vacuoles. Clear spaces in the cytoplasm filled with water and various substances in the solution. Okay, vacuoles are clear spaces. They are non-living. Okay, and they have uh, they are filled with watery substance in solution. Some substances are dissolved in that solution. This that solution is known as the cell sap. In plant cell, the vacuoles are large, and the liquid which they contain is called the cell sap. So the liquid inside the vacuoles in the plant cell is known as cell sap. Animal cells do not have a prominent vacuole. They are very few in number and uh, means very few and they, they are not prominent. Very small ones are present in case of animal cell. Coming to the nucleus, the brain of the cell. Very important part, prominent cell organelle which we can see where you, uh, in that diagram also you were able to see the nucleus was very prominent. It was spherical and oval in shape. Why called the brain of the cell? Because it regulates all the cell functions. It is made up of two parts. The nuclear membrane that is the covering of the nucleus. The membrane which surrounds the nucleus is known as the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. And also the nucleoplasm in, uh, is inside a jelly-like substance, more uh, uh, gel-like. It is known as the nucleoplasm which contains the nucleolus and the chromosomes or chromosomes are sometimes also written as chromatin material. Go to, uh, let us go to the next slide functions regulates coordinates various life processes of the cell plays an important role in cell division okay uh, nucleus is very important in cell division very important for coordinating all the life processes of, of the cell what a cell has to do is told by the nucleus contains genes which determine heredity the genes you know that genes from one person to another from one person means we get our genes from our father and mother isn't it and what all genes we get from our father and mother accordingly we get any characters that is curly hair for example your mother has curly hair your father has straight hair and you get straight hair that means you got the genes of your father and uh, less genes of your mother okay now uh, we uh, you can see here children um, that i have given some diagrams here okay to explain different words now in the uh, diagram a and diagram b first we'll deal with a and b first okay now in the uh, previous slide i told you about chromatin and chromosomes okay you need to understand the difference between these two when the cell is not dividing you know that cells always continue to divide when and uh, as and when required now when the cell is not dividing then the uh, means you can see these thread-like structures which are called the chromatin inside the nucleoplasm. It appears as these thread-like structures intertwined among themselves. And when the cell starts dividing, then this chromatin becomes condensed and forms these chromosomes which are these X-shaped structures you can see in uh, figure B. In figure B, you can see that these X-shaped structures, that these that chromosomes which were there in the non-dividing cell have now divide uh, in this dividing cell they have become condensed and form these chromosomes okay and you can see the nuclear pores also the nuclear membrane has different nuclear pores through which materials come in and go out of the cell you can see the nucleolus also in uh, figure a you can see a black colored one and in figure b you can see a dark stain in between a blue colored one okay that is the nucleolus okay which is present inside the nucleoplasm 
now these uh, in your book certain things are written that's why i have put the last uh, two diagrams uh, uh, in this nucleus part you can see nucleus is a small spherical mass located somewhat in the center of the cytoplasm it has a delicate nuclear membrane we already discussed about that which is filled with a dense nucleoplasm in nucleoplasm there are certain thread like structures called the chromatin fibers so thread like when the cell is not dividing that time chromatin and when the cell wants to divide it becomes these chromatin fibers become con condensed to form chromosomes okay the cells in which the nuclear membrane is absent is called the prokaryotic cell i have a slide after this which we'll discuss and uh, the ones uh, this prokaryotic cells are called actually primitive cells see the in your books you can see this page number 14 prokaryotic if i divide the word pro means primitive and karyon means nucleus means primitive nucleus that is the nuclear material whichever is present that is the chromosomes are not bounded by a nuclear membrane in case of prokaryotic cells in case of eukaryotic cells it has a membrane that is the uh, this um, chromatin material is bounded by this nuclear membrane uh, that that's and u means this eukaryotic cell if i divide the word eukaryotic u means true and karyon means nucleus it is a true nucleus a nucleus which is bounded by a, a nuclear membrane is called a eukaryotic cell so eukaryotic all organisms other than bacteria in prokaryotic cells we can give the example of this bacteria okay each nucleus also has at least one nucleolus at least one nucleolus is always present which is concerned with again part it participates in protein synthesis mainly protein synthesis is done by ribosomes but participates in protein synthesis this nucleolus okay number of chromosomes now uh, those chromosomes which i told you how many we human beings have okay in your book it is written that uh, number of chromosomes is definite in each species every human cell means human body cell we have 46 chromosomes and that is shown in this diagram d can you see there are uh, i have shown here 23 23 how 23 pairs but totally if i uh, uh, this uh, double a 23 it will be 46 so 46 chromosomes which we take in pairs when we take in pairs they are 23 chromosomes because two two are alike can you see in that diagram d i have put number 1 then number 2 see this is the first pair they are similar in structure that's why the first pair the second one is also similar in structure uh, that's why they are the second pair though it is a bit tilted on the other side the second one then also they are similar in structure the third one the uh, third pair is similar in structure similarly up to 22 all are similar in structure and they occur in pairs the last one you can see it is a male and female if uh, it is a female child or a female it is a girl then the sex chromosomes will be xx and if it is a male it will be x and y this we will deal with in class 10 when you go to the higher class okay as uh, for the diagram c uh, we'll deal with the diagram c uh, what is written now these chromatin or chromosomes they are actually made up of dna okay deoxyribonucleic acid and uh, the chromosomes are made of chromatin which is composed of hereditary units called genes okay genes are made up of complex chemical substances called dna that is deoxyribonucleic acid full form very important now you can see in this diagram c children that uh, here this is the dna which is shown okay you can see two uh, uh, ribbon like structures this is dna and a part of this dna is called a gene now from you can see that from with a arrow it is marked from here to here it is a gene now that gene might be of any character it might be of the uh, uh, skin color it might be of hair uh, type anything the color of your eyes the complexion anything it can be okay so like these dna has specific uh, parts which are known as the genes and genes are made up of complex chemical substances known as deoxyribonucleic acid genes and not the number of chromosome determine the characters of the species what characters which we are going to have for example we are having these uh, 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 46 chromosomes or 3, 23 pairs of chromosomes okay if some other uh, organism though there are no uh, such organism then also if they have the same uh, number of chromosomes not that though that organism and we will be same for example in your book a very good example is given lion tiger and house cat all have 30 h chromosome that is they will be having 38 chromosomes in each of their cells but do all the three look alike 
so chromosomes do not do not determine that how we will uh, look like it is the genes which determine that how we will look like what are the types of genes which are present in those chromosomes that determines how we will look like clear so this is all about genes and the structure of the cell now children let us go to the next slide which the prokaryotic eukaryotic cell which i already told you the prokaryotic means pro means primitive and karyotic or is karyon means nucleus so primitive nucleus that is they have plasma membrane but their nucleus doesn't contain is not well developed and does not contain a nuclear membrane and this nucleus and in case of prokaryotic cells a very important thing that the nucleus is not called nucleus it is called nucleoid and you can see this diagram alongside of the bacteria it is not bounded by any nuclear membrane isn't it you can see it is not bounded by any membrane it is a prokaryotic cell example is bacterium and when we talk about the eukaryotic cell it is bounded by a plasma membrane also the nucleus is bounded by a nuclear membrane with all the cell organelles nicely present example paramecium you can take or any other plant and animal cell also you can take there okay so eukaryotic cell has a well defined nucleus okay children this is all for today okay oh here uh, one more slide is left there is a difference between plant and animal cell okay plant and animal cell uh, is uh, means here what are the differences we'll see cell wall uh, a definite cell wall is present which is made up of cellulose in case of plant cell animal cell has no cell wall centrosome is pre not present in case of plant cell it is only present in case of animal cell vacuoles are prominent in case of uh, these uh, plant cell uh, they are big in size and in case of animal cell the vacuoles are very small and temporary in case of plastids plastids are usually means uh, these plastids are present in plant cell but animal cell do not contain any plastids size if we look at the size uh, in this one children then the size is larger in case of plant cell with distinct outlines why because of the presence of the cell wall which is rigid that's why and usually smaller with less distinct boundaries cytoplasm is not so dense but in case of animal cell the cytoplasm is very very dense um, arrangement of the cytoplasm if we talk about the arrangement of the cytoplasm you know that most of the place is occupied by the vacuoles in uh, case of plant cell and that's why all the cytoplasm moves to the periphery towards the side and in case of uh, uh, plant animal cell the cytoplasm fills almost the entire cell so this is all about the plants and animal cell difference children uh, on the basis of some points for example uh, dif uh, difference between plants and animal cell on the basis of centrosome or on the basis of arrangement of the cytoplasm like these questions can be given so get prepared like that okay protoplasm lastly i have written living substances in an organism it is the living substance living substance means it is the total living substance of a living cell which consists of the cytoplasm plus the nucleus cytoplasm plus the nucleus consists of the protoplasm so we are done with this uh, chapter children and we'll discuss some of the question answers in the next class uh, till then you go through the chapter nicely mark the important points and revise all the important parts or differences and uh, important features of the cell organelles everything very nicely uh, during uh, before means after uh, means i'll come with a new video very soon but uh, be prepared with the lesson which we have completed just now thank you children i'll be back soon with the next video